good morning children today i'll teach you the next part of the chapter periodic table now before we begin today's lesson i'll just quickly give you the answers uh, to the questions given for the home assignment quickly match your answers those who have not written do it take this seriously study let's begin periodic table what is a periodic table define the first question is define periodic table it's a tabular arrangement of elements in groups and periods highlighting the regular trends in properties of elements what is modern periodic law it's the mosley's law that is um, properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic number what are periods the horizontal rows are called periods uh, groups the vertical columns of the periodic table are called groups calcogens the group 16 elements or group 6a elements of the periodic table which are capable of forming ores are called calcogens example oxygen sulfur halogens group 17 elements or 7a elements which are capable of forming salts are called halogens example fluorine chlorine etc second question give short answers what are typical elements typical elements are those elements which have their outermost orbit incomplete incomplete means less than 8 electrons except for hydrogen which is less than 2 electrons like the nearest electronic configuration of the inert gas helium so their outermost shell is incomplete what are transition elements transition elements are those whose two outermost shells are incomplete the last one as well as the penultimate one what are rare earth elements rare earth elements are the third group elements of sixth period and seventh period respectively the sixth period third group rare earth elements are called lanthanides and the seventh period third group elements are called actinides name third question an alkali metal of fourth period potassium and alkaline earth metal of second period beryllium an element of second period with valency 3 boron the calcogen of second period oxygen the halogen of third period chlorine the atomic number of an element is 17 straight state its group and period so for finding this you have to first write the electronic configuration 2 8 7 7 means Uh, three. There are three shells, so period is three, and uh, valence electron seven. Seven means group seventeen or group seven A. So the element belongs to third period and group seventeen A. Now let's begin today's lessons. I hope you are ready with your books and copies. So today we'll be doing the periodic properties and periodicity. so what is periodicity uh the repetition it has been found that mm, the certain elements repeat the properties so this repetition of properties repetition or recurrence or gradual variation of properties uh, what kind of similar properties at regular intervals is called periodicity period means regular interval time interval interval so periodicity is the recurrence or repetition or gradual variation gradual variation means increase or decrease we'll uh, explain it in details as we proceed so recurrence or repetition of gradual uh, or gradual variation of similar properties at regular interval is called periodicity then what are periodic properties the properties that reappear or show regular graduation regular gradation at regular intervals are called periodic properties the properties that repeat are periodic properties and the phenomenon of repetition is called periodicity 
Now, what is the cause of this periodicity? See, an atom is identified by its atomic number. Atomic number means number of electrons, out of which the valence electrons are quite significant. So the chemical properties of elements are determined by the number of valence electrons an atom has. Because chemical properties are determined by the number of electrons they loss and lose and gain. So it has been observed that uh, these uh, valence electrons of certain elements are same and hence they are classified in the um, periodic table under the same group. So this recurrence of this similar electronic configuration is the cause of the periodicity. Recurrence means repetition. So this electronic configuration repeats at regular interval, therefore periodicity is observed. See for example, lithium, let us take the examples of uh, elements of group 1, uh, that is lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and the next one is francium. See lithium has 2, 1 electronic configuration, sodium 2, 8, 1, potassium 2, 8, 8, 1, rubidium 2, 8, 18, 8, 1. Cesium 2, 8, 18, 18, 8, 1. All of them have one electron in their outermost orbit. That is, they have the same valence electrons. Now, what is this 2, 1, 2, 8, 1, C? Lithium, what configuration lithium has? Sodium, which is the eighth element from lithium, repeats. Potassium, which is the eighth element from sodium, repeats. Rubidium, which is the 18th element from potassium, repeats. Cesium, which is the 18th element from rubidium repeats. That means that interval, that interval of 7, 7, 17, 17, that is a regular interval. So since this electronic configuration repeats, periodicity occurs. So the cause of periodicity is recurrence of similar electronic configuration at regular intervals. Now see, how do the number of shells and um, valence electrons vary? Now when we learn this variation, we have to learn it as we move left to right from the periodic table or we move from top to bottom of the periodic table. Now what are shells or orbits? They are the pathways in which the electrons move around the nucleus. And what are valence electrons? The valence electrons are the electrons present in the outermost orbit of the atom of an element. How do these two change? See, as we move across a period that is from left to right, the number of shells remain same. So if we go period 2, we take all elements of period 2 has 2 uh, shells. All elements of period 3 have 3 shells. All elements of period 4 have 4 shells. So, as we move from left to right, the number of shells remains same. But what happens down the group? As the period changes, 1-1 one, 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 one shell gets added. So, second period elements have 2 shells. Third period elements have 3 shells. Fourth period elements have 4 shells. So like that, one one shell gets added. So number of shells increases down a group. Valence electrons, what happens? As we move across a period, the number of valence electrons increase. So first group has one, second group has two, third group has three, fourth group has four. Like that, the number of valence electrons increase. And down a group, the valence electrons remain same. Since elements of same group will have same valence electrons. So look at the table, see, for example, I've given that second period and first group. Second period starts with lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, neon, or ox nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Now see, all of them belong to second period. So the number of shells, two. Valence electrons are denoted within brackets. So valence electrons for lithium is one, beryllium two, boron three, and so on. 
down a group as we move let us take the first group so lithium is of second period sodium is of third period valence electron one potassium fourth period valence electron one rubidium fifth period valence electron one so number of shells across a period remains same down a group increases valence electron across a period increases down a group remains same now you will have to study some periodic properties what are they and how do they vary you learn in the definition gradual variation that is either increase or decrease so that you have to learn now there are six periodic properties which you will learn at this grade that is atomic size metallic character non-metallic character ionization potential electron affinity electronegativity out of which today we will discuss three that is atomic size metallic character and non-metallic character now when you are learning these periodic properties you have to learn certain things first first you get thorough with that like you have to learn the definition then what are the factors on which they depend and how do they change across a period down a group and why do they change first one is atomic size so what is atomic size atomic size is the or atomic radius it's also called it's a distance between the nucleus of an atom to the outermost orbit see the first diagram the line between the two arrows that's the distance between the nucleus and the outermost orbit that is called the atomic radius the greater the radius the bigger the size suppose there are there is a molecule formed by combination of two atoms then the atomic size will be half of the distance between the two nuclei of the atoms so molecule has two atoms then the distance between the two nuclei divided by 2 gives the atomic radius of that molecule now this atomic size depends on two factors one is number of shells and one is the nuclear charge number of shells uh, you can very easily see understand uh, a nuclear charge is the number of protons that are present in the nucleus that uh, uh, decides the pull with which the um, nucleus attracts the outermost orbit now how does atomic size change across a period and down a group across a period atomic size decreases down a group atomic size increases why is it so see as we move across a period I said it depends on two factors atomic number of shells and nuclear charge depends on two factors number of shells nuclear charge so what happens to the number of shells they remain same but what happens to the nuclear charge it increases number of protons increase as a result what happens the force with which the nucleus pulls the electrons towards the outermost orbit towards it increases so as we move across the period since the number of electron a number of shells remain same but the number of uh, but the nuclear charge increases the size of the atom decreases what happens down a group down a group as we go down a group every with every group one shell gets added since one shell gets added the size automatically increases so what happens to atomic size across a period it decreases what happens to atomic size down a group it increases now since atomic size decreases across a period so the group one elements of the periodic table will be largest and group 17 elements will be smallest right because the nuclear charge of 17 group 17 is more 
Now, the question arises then what about the inert elements? They are the last elements in each period. Then why are they not the smallest? What happens in case of inert elements? Like for helium, it has got outermost orbit 2 and the others have outermost orbit 8 electrons. That means their octet is complete. That means they have the maximum number of electrons they can have. As a result, the electrons, they exhibit a repulsive force amongst one another. And that reduces the nuclear pull, the force with which the nucleus attracts. Little bit it is reduced. Hence, the size is little bigger. Not bigger than all elements, bigger than the halogen group. Hence, we consider the halogen to be the last as far as the atomic size is concerned. So, the biggest elements are group 1 elements and smallest elements are group 17 elements or group 7a elements of the periodic table. And why are inert gases exception? Because their octet is complete octet or duplet is complete and since their octet is complete the electrons valence electrons they exhibit a, a kind of repulsive force which reduces the nuclear pull and thereby increasing their size now some other questions related to this topic are like why are cations smaller than their respective atoms why are anions larger than their respective atoms and how do size of isoelectronic ions vary what are cations cations are positively charged ions how are they formed they are formed by loss of electrons from the atoms for example sodium sodium has got electronic configuration 281 how is sodium ion formed when that one outermost electron is given so now after giving the electrons what is the electronic configuration 28 so you see there one shell is reduced automatically the size will also reduce why are anions larger than the respective atoms take for example chlorine Chlorine atom has electronic configuration 287. How does it become an ion? What are anions? Negatively charged ions. And they are formed by accepting or gaining electrons. So chloride ion will have electronic configuration 288. Now right now what did I say just a few minutes ago? That it is a configuration of inert elements. And what happens in the inert elements? Since the outermost orbit is complete the electrons in the outermost orbit exhibit a repulsive force that reduces the nuclear pull and hence the size little bit is bigger therefore chloride anions are bigger than their respective atoms now what are isoelectronic ions Isoelectronic ions are those ions which have same number of electrons. Ions are formed by loss or gain of electrons. So after loss or gain of electrons, the number of electrons vary. But the number of protons remain same. So although they have same number of electrons, their size will vary. Hence, we are taking, discussing this particular uh, point in this, under this topic. See, magnesium has electronic configuration 282. How does it form magnesium ion? By losing two electrons and it is 28. Sodium ion is formed by losing one electron. Electronic configuration is 28. Fluorine ion is formed by gaining one electron. So from 2, 7 it becomes 2, 8. An oxygen atom ion is formed by gaining two electrons. 2, 6 becomes 2, 8. So see all these ions have 10 electrons but their number of protons are different. Magnesium has 12 protons, sodium has 11 protons, fluorine has 9 protons, oxygen has 8 protons. So, the nuclear pull is more for those ions whose number of protons is more. So, magnesium 12 protons, 10 electrons. Pull is greater, size is smaller. Oxygen has 
8 electrons but 10 protons. So, outward pull is more, hence the size is bigger. So, although they have same number of electrons, their size will vary because the nuclear charge is different. Now, let us go to the next topic that is another uh, property that is metallic character. How is metallic character decided? Metallic character is decided by the number or uh, by the tendency of atoms to lose electron. Now, all the elements placed towards the left hand side of the periodic table have a greater tendency to lose electron than the elements placed at the towards the right of the periodic table. Hence, across a period, metallic character decreases. And on what this um, particular property depends on? Two factors, atomic size and nuclear charge. Now, what happens to the atomic size across a period? It decreases. What happens to the nuclear charge? It increases. So, as atomic size decreases, metallic character decreases. That this is directly proportional. Why? See, atomic size increases uh, decreases means the size becomes smaller. The force with which the nuclear pulls the outermost orbit is larger. Therefore, it becomes difficult to remove the electrons as we move from left to right of the period. So, it's easier to remove electrons from the elements which are towards the left of the uh, periodic table. Whereas, it is difficult to remove the electrons from the atoms which are towards the right of the um, uh, periodic table. See, sodium has 281, whereas chlorine has 287. Removing that one electron will be easier. Then removing two, eight, then removing seven electrons. Hence, group um, uh, elements towards the left are more metallic. Elements towards the li uh, right of the periodic table are less metallic. So as we move across the period, metallic character decreases. What happens down a group? Down a group, the number of shells increase. No, so the distance between the nucleus and the outermost orbit also increase. Hence, the force of attraction reduces. So, as we go down, the size increases, the distance increases, it becomes easier to remove the electrons from the outermost orbit. So, as we go down a group, metallic character increases. Now, look at the periodic table. See, the elements placed towards the left, that is group 1 elements, group 2 elements, they are metallic. Again, so, uh, take period number 2, which is most metallic, lithium, which is least metallic, fluorine. Third period, which is most metallic, sodium, which is the least metallic, chlorine. Fourth period, potassium, most metallic, krypton, uh, sorry, bromine, least metallic. Now, as we go down a group, metallic character increases. So, group 1, lithium, why lithium hydrogen is exception, we will not consider it. Lithium is least metallic, francium is most metallic. Group 2A or 2, beryllium is least metallic, radium is most metallic. Now, you may be asked questions like this, say, uh, three elements are given, magnesium, calcium and strontium. Out of these three, which will be most metallic? Obviously, strontium. Which will be least metallic? Magnesium. Now, if you go to period seven, uh, group 7, halogen group, see, fluorine will be least metallic, acetone will be most metallic. Now see, well, how do we decide these all are non-metals? Then how do we decide? You can see the change. See, uh, like uh, you have studied states of matter. Gases have their molecules far apart. Liquids have their molecules closer. Solids have even closer. 
so as you go down a group 7ac fluorine is gaseous chlorine is gaseous bromine is liquid iodine is solid so see metals we associate with solids so see how the metallic character is changing now go to the next uh, periodic table that is non metallic character it is just the opposite of metallic character metallic character is uh, the tendency uh, to lose electron non metallic character will be tendency to gain electrons and this also depends on two factors atomic size and nuclear charge so across a period what happens to non metallic character as i've said in the previous case as we move across a period it becomes difficult to uh, take out electron so losing electron becomes easier that means the opposite has to because an atom has either to lose or gain electron so gaining becomes easier so the non metallic character increases across a period why see the atomic size decreases atomic size decreases means nuclear pull increases there nuclear charge increases so the nuclear pull increases hence it becomes difficult for the atoms to lose electron so they gain electron down a group what happens non metallic character decreases because as they move far away gaining electrons that pull decreases the nuclear pull between the nucleus and the outermost orbit decreases so gaining electrons the power to gain electrons reduce therefore down a group non metallic character decreases so these are the periodic properties we will discuss today children now i have checked the questions given at the end of the lesson they are very good questions simple easy this chapter is not very difficult go through read try and solve the problems write them down Next day we will discuss the remaining three periodic properties till then thank you and god bless you